بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته This is Riyad Razazi welcoming you to another session of the Tafsir Bites or Bits This is day number 7 Tafsir you know the session number 7 inshallah ta'ala Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah all of you Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah marhaba Marhaba, welcome, welcome. I just want to give a minute uh, for more people to join. Inshallah, this is the uh, Tafsir Bites or Bits uh, session that we've been having, alhamdulillah, since the beginning of Ramadan, right? And today, inshallah ta'ala, we'll uh, move on to Surat Al-Imran. So those of you who just joined, uh welcome and then if you may want to grab a, a pen and paper or maybe a notebook for you to be taking notes inshallah because you may um you may need to take some notes inshallah right i hope you're all doing great inshallah ta'ala um today's saturday so i see that it's pretty slow out there i don't know why Um, there's less people today, very, very, very less people, but these sessions are recorded anyway, so we'll move on, inshallah, with it, all right, inshallah. And then you can always come back, and those who have come in late or those who couldn't make it, they can always go back and watch them, inshallah, all right. So, again, officially, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Riyadh Razazi, and welcoming you all to the Tafsir Bits or Tafsir Bites. This is day number seven, you know, or episode number seven. Um, we've spoken about Surah Al-Fatiha. We spoke about Surah Al-Baqarah. This is, uh, you know, the last time when we when we had our session, we, it was about Surah Al-Baqarah. We finished it. And today we'll be moving to Surah Al-Imran. But just one thing that I needed to mention, maybe, you know, those of you who've been taking notes, with regard to Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, when was it revealed? We said that it was revealed in Medina, uh, in, in chunks, right, in stages, but all in Medina. But uh, in the Quran, in the Mus'haf, it is, uh, it's, uh, the sequence of it is right after uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, which is number two, right? It's number two. But, but the Surah Al-Baqarah it sh- itself, the very, you know, it was revealed uh, in terms of numbers, Because we have 114 surahs, right, in the Quran. We have 114 surahs. The very first one that was revealed is Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. So with regard to Surah Al-Baqarah, it is, according to Ahl al-Im, is number 86. Surah number 86 in terms of when it was revealed. So number 86, right after Al-Mutawafin, and in fact, before Al-Imran. Right? It is before Al-Imran. And right after Surah Al-Mutawafin. So although it's it you know it's located right after Surah Al-Fatiha in Al in the Quran, you know, as uh, number two, but uh when it was revealed, like in terms of numbers, according to all the like 114 surahs, where does it fit? It's number 80-86. Number 80-86, right? Uh, Surat Al-Imran Surat Al-Imran, its number is number three Number three And how many ayat? 200 ayat Surat Al-Baqarah, 286 verses And Surat Al-Imran, 200 verses And how many juz? It's in juz three and four All right? Surat Al-Imran, juz number three and four And is it Makki Surah or Madani Surah? According to, alhamdulillah The ittifaq, the madahib, all the uh, uh, scholars, the, 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 there's no discrepancy that it, it is actually a Madani Surah. Madani Surah. It was also revealed in Medina, not in Mecca. It was revealed in Medina. Although it was not revealed, <coughs> excuse me, and all the Surahs, they were not revealed in one, in one shot. They were all revealed in batch, batches, like in chunks, right? So, but this Surah Al-Imran, just like Al-Baqarah, they were revealed in in Medina. So it's a Madani, Madini Surah. Number three, right after Al-Fatiha and Baqarah comes Al-Imran. Number three, the and how many ayat? 200 ayat. The name, the name is Al-Imran, family of Imran. 
we don't know from the Quran or Ahadith with regard to the name of the wife of Imran, right? But in the in the other scriptures, they say her name is Hannah, but we do not know. But there's an amazing story of this woman who wanted to change history, who wanted to change history so much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made one surah just after this family, the family of Imran. So it's called Al-Imran, it's also called Az-Zahra. Az-Zahra, one of the names of uh, Al-Imran, it's called Az-Zahra because it's it has it's uh, uh, it's it's the nur that comes out from it. There's so much nur in it, Zahra. Zahra is just like Fatima Zahra. You know, Zahra is a is a is a is a type of flower, right? It's a type of rose, it's a type of flower, very beautiful smell. Zahar, right? Uh so uh Aswarat Al Imran is also called Az Zahra. It's called so uh, it's it has two names, Al Imran or Az Zahra. Uh what are the virtues of Surat Al-Imran? It has many virtues. Surat Al-Imran has many virtues. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, Iqra'u al-Qur'an, read the Qur'an, فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ شَفِيعَ الْيَسْحَابِهِ Read the Qur'an for it comes on the day of judgment as Shafi'ah, as, uh, as an intercessor for those who used to read it. So the Prophet says, read the Qur'an for it comes uh, as an intercessor for those who reads it. And then he says, Iqra'u al-Zahra wayn. Read the two Zahra, read the two, you know, like flowers, the two Zahra. Al-Baqarah and Surat Al-Imran. Al-Baqarah is also called Al-Zahra, and Al-Imran is also called, like I mentioned, Al-Zahra. فَإِنَّهُمَ تَأْتِيَنْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كَأَنَّهُمَ غَمَامَتَانِ So the Prophet says, they will come in the Day of Judgment like two, two clouds that will shade you, two clouds. تُحَجَّنِ uh, عَنْ أَصْحَابِهِمَا They will witness... For those who used to recite it, they will witness for those who used to read it. Both Surah Al Baqarah and Surah Al Imran, they will come to defend you on the Day of Judgment. Now, to defend you. Oh Allah, that man, that person used to recite us. No, they will come to defend you, not for Allah to throw in hellfire, no, to defend you for Allah to forgive you and to admit you into Jannah. So the Prophet says, read uh, Al Quran, so it comes on the Day of Judgment as. Um, as intercessor to those who used to read it and read the two Zahra, the two Zahra, the two like the flowery one. Um, it's just like jasmine, but it's not jasmine, you know, Zahra, it's a different type of flower. And 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 the Prophet says, Al Imran and Al Baqarah, they will come on the day of judgment just like two two clouds, and they they uh they will they will defend you. On the day of judgment, you know, Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Imran. Uh, also, uh, it is um, Anas radiallahu anhu. He narrates that uh, when Ida Rajulu Ida Qaraas Al-Baqarah Al-Imran, Yadu fina adiman. Those amongst the Sahaba who used to memorize Al-Imran and Al-Baqarah, they were deemed to be great people, very respected people. Subhanallah. Whoever got to memorize Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, according to Anas, they were regarded to be very, very, uh, very, you know, great and respectable people. Man uh, qara'a al-Imran fahuwa ghani. There's another hadith by Ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud used to say, whosoever reads Al-Imran, yani whosoever memorizes Al-Imran, he is a free of want, ghani, wealthy, but in terms of wealth, Wealth, not necessarily just like money, but wealthy. He's free of want. Whosoever memorizes Al Imran. So this is some of the um, uh, the virtues of reciting and memorizing Surat Al Imran. When I say that they will come to intercede, now to defend you means to intercede for you to try to Allah Azza wa Jal to uh, they will be your shafa'a to enter Jannah, inshaAllah Taala. As I mentioned, it is surah in the Quran, you know, number three, right after the Fatiha and Al Baqarah, uh, and it talks about a lot of things. You know, we'll talk about the content of Surah Al Baqarah. There's a lot of things, uh, such as talking about riba, such as talking about Al Hajj. Uh, um, talking about the uh, the believers, talking about uh, the battle of uh, of. Uh, of Uhud, 
Oh, yes, amazing. It talks about the Battle of Uhud and how the Muslims got really heart uh, uh, broken after they lost the battle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, uh, was to comfort them, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so it's all in Surah Al-Baqarah. It's a beautiful Surah to read and to uh, uh, and to ponder on. With regard to Tertib, Tertib Surah, as I mentioned, it is Surah Al-Baqarah is number 86 in terms of its revelation. It's 86. Surah Al-Imran is 87, right after Al-Baqarah. Right? This is in terms how many surahs do we have? As I mentioned, right? We have 114 surahs. 140 surahs. The very first surah that was revealed is Iqra. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Right? That was the very first ayah that was revealed. Iqra. So Surah Al-Baqarah is number 86. Surah Al-Imran is 87. Right before Anfal. Right before Anfal. And after Al-Baqarah. So it's number 87. Uh, was also revealed on the year of the night or tent of the Hijrah. Where? In Medina. So it's Surah Madaniya. All of it, Madaniya. Not like some of it is in Mecca and some in Medina. La. The whole Surah is, was revealed in Medina. And exactly on either the ninth or 10th of the of Hijrah. Or after the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, it is the year actually before Amal Wufud. What is Amal Wufud? Amal Wufud is the year of delegations. When delegations used to come to embrace Islam. A lot of delegations were coming to embrace Islam. So that Al-Imran was revealed right before that year when, you know, and also Ghazwat Uhud, the year of Ghazwat Uhud was revealed on Shawwal, min as-sana al-thalita lil-hijra. You know, some of it was revealed on Shawwal of the sana uh, al-thalita, al-thalita lil-hijra, right? After the hijra of the Prophet Muhammad, the, 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 the third year of the hijra of the Prophet Muhammad. So, Although there's this little discrepancy in terms of is it the third, uh, is it, you know, the ninth or tenth of the Hijra, but it is a very early surah, you know, that was revealed. Very early surah because, uh, you know, some of it was revealed, you know, and, and, in, uh, in, uh, in, in surah in, uh, in after the battle of Uhud. And the battle of Uhud happened on the third year of the Hijra. The battle of uh, Badr happened on the second year of the Hijra, and the battle of Uhud happened in the third year of the Hijra. So it is a pretty, pretty uh, 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 early, early surah, uh, and it was revealed in Medina, not in Mecca. What are the reasons for uh, its revelation, my brothers and sisters? Ahl al ilm Ahl al tafasir they mention uh, 41 reasons, 41 reasons as to why the surah was revealed, surah al-Imran, right? Uh, if you were to ponder, uh, you will find between, and we will go through the detail with this, inshallah, ta'ala, between one verse number one to verse number 22 and verse number 23 to number 99. Between one to 22, there is one section, and between two, uh, um, uh, uh, 23 and 99, there's another section. And all this about 15 reasons. There were 15 reasons why, you know, uh, these ayat were, re were revealed. Some of them are related to the Jews. And some of them are related to Tarbiyah. Tarbiyah. And, and within those Tarbiyah, some of them also have to do with Ahkam, rulings. Um, and some of them also, they had to deal with the Ahbar al-Yahud, the scholars of the Jews. The Jew, the scholars of the Jews, and then you have the the third section, which actually starts from one hundred to one eighty nine, from one hundred to one eighty nine. That's the third section, and then you have al Khatima. Al Khatima is the end, you know, the the uh, the conclusion of the surah, and that's from one ninety to two hundred. From 190 to 200, and that's about 26 reasons why you know those ayats were revealed. Nine of those reasons were just related to the Battle of Uhud. Nine of those were re related to the Battle of Uhud, and 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 seven were related to uh, Tarbiyat al-Sahaba, the Tarbiyat of the Sahaba, 
you know, because, you know, the Sahaba who, who did not listen to the command of the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, when he told them not to move, you know, from the uh, from the mount of the archers, you know, the story of Uhud. And then uh, after they lost that battle, they were really, really heartbroken. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed some ayat to do some tarbiyah, you know, for the Sahaba. And also there were some uh, uh, reasons related to the Jews as well. Uh, and also there was one reason, it's interesting, regarding the Bi'ar of Ma'una, Bi'ar, the well of Ma'una, you know, uh, it's an interesting story. And there was also one reason pertinent to the people of Ahl al-Kitab, the people of the book. So it's altogether, altogether, Asbab al-Nuzul, the reasons of the Nuzul or the reasons of this surah being revealed, altogether, uh, 41 reasons. 41 reasons altogether. Some are pertinent to the Jews, some are pertinent to the Tabiya of the Sahaba. Uh, there's some Ahkam, uh, there's some are pertinent to the, uh, the people of the book, uh, and, and, and some pertinent to the scholars of the Jews as well. And then, and then, uh, this, uh, and then some pertinent to the Battle of Badr. There were two, three reasons uh, related to the pa Battle of Badr, which happened right before Uhud. The beginning of the surah, because remember we, when I mentioned there were 10 intros of the Qur'an, the whole uh, Qur'an in the surahs, Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, was to start with 10 introductions, you know, from all the Qur'an, you will find 10 types, 10 types of introductions. In surah Al-Imran, the type of matla surah, the type of introduction is Alif Lam Mim and Alif Lam Mim, we call those as we call them Huruf uh, At-Tahajji, if you remember. Huruf At-Tahajji. So, so that Al Imran starts with uh, uh, the intro of it is Half Min Huruf At-Tahajji, which is Alif Lam Mim. And these Huruf At-Tahajji, are there any explanations to them? Like, what do they mean? Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Ra, uh, Alif Lam Sad. Kaf uh, ya Ain Sad Sad. There's no actual, actual, you know, explanation, you know, authentic, you know, either from the Prophet or from the Sahaba, you know, with regard to these types of letters, you know, these letters called Huruf al Tahajji. There's some people nowadays who come up with a bunch of things, you know, including some mathematical, you know, research saying that these letters, there's some, some, some sort of mathematical uh, theories behind them and whatnot. This is their research. This is theirs, you know. Um, Prophet Muhammad salam, never mentioned anything. So there's no need for us, nor the Sahaba, there's no need for us to dwell on something that, you know, uh, if there was any meaning or anything really uh, sort of beneficial to us, Prophet Muhammad would have mentioned it. Alayhi salatu salam, he would have mentioned it. But he didn't, alayhi salatu salam. So, uh, but the mawdu'ah, the mawdu of the surah, the content of the surah, right? The true content of the surah, as we're going to talk about in detail, inshallah ta'ala, the content of the surah is tathbit al-mu'minin. Really to help al-mu'minin, tathbit al-mu'minin, meaning is to help the believers stand fast, stand fast in the deen. Right? So this is maybe the main, the main, the main um, um, uh, mawdu or the main content or subject, subject of the whole surah is to help the Muslims or the believers stand fast in the deen, to give them tarbiya, some some sort of, some type of discipline and education as well, right? Regardless of the other related, you know, ayat, but the main, you know, the core of the surah and the subject of the surah is tathbit al mu'mini thabat, meaning, you know, helping the Muslims or the believers to stand fast, was to stay fast in the day. Uh, in the in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One last thing, my brothers and sisters, before I go into the, the details, uh, the surah, the surah, Al-Imran, when we talk about the content of it, is divided into three categories. The whole surah is divided into three, in the, in the subject of it is divided into three main categories. The first category is Ta'rifu Billah. Ta'rif Billah. Is you know uh, 
letting people know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teaching you know the people know about Allah azza wa jal, teaching them about Allah, teaching them about tawheed. So the surah teaches us about tawheed, teaches us about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teaches us about who Allah azza wa jal is. Surah al-Baqarah starts with Alif Lam Mim, Dalik al Kitab ula Rayba fi. One of the things that Surah al-Baqarah teaches is also the, you know, teaches about the book. But this surah mostly teaches about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second category of Surah al-Imran, it teaches us about this hiwal, ma'a ahl al-kitab, this conversation that happened, that, that, you know, that Allah azza wa had with the ahl al-kitab, the people of the book. Hiwal, as if Allah is asking them a question. You know, ta'alaw ila kalimatin sawa. Come to one word, come to one belief that we all should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the second category, you know, of the uh, of this the topic, the topic of the of the surah, surah al-Imran, is this is this dialogue, this dialogue with the people of the book. And the third, the third uh, 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 category, you know, of this surah, the in terms of the topic of the surah, is you know, tathbit uh, ahl al-iman. Meaning is to help the believers stand fast in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, three, three segments. So Al-Imran is divided into three main segments in terms of the topic or the subject. Topic number one, it talks about, you know, uh, teaching people and letting people know, making them aware of the oneness of Allah and who Allah Azza wa is. Number two, this dialogue with the people of the book number three is to help the believers stand fast in the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so with the detail of all these sections i will save inshallah ta'ala until our next session in the next session we will talk about these three segments in more detail from what ayah to what ayah from what verse to what verse what did allah talk about here what did allah talk about there what did allah talk about the third so this requires a little bit more time and i will save it until next monday inshallah because tomorrow is sunday so we have a day off on sunday inshallah but we will meet inshallah ta'ala for this uh, the next session tafsir bite session on monday inshallah ta'ala at three o'clock p.m eastern time eight o'clock p.m uk time inshallah ta'ala i hope uh, this was uh, beneficial to some of you inshallah that the 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 tafsir they are recorded on you on facebook and on youtube yes they are recorded and also on instagram but on instagram only for 24 hours on the, my stories but on facebook because i have them on facebook and i have them on instagram they um, they are recorded alhamdulillah and zarla khair my my admin he also uploads them onto youtube barakallahu fikum thank you so much for uh, joining i shall see you later on today at uh, six o'clock p.m another session about the end of time another session about jannah inshallah ta'ala right another session about jannah you know this will be part number three you do not want to miss it because uh i have also some nice surprises for you you know so today 6 p.m eastern time 11 p.m uk time 12 a.m belgium time belgium time all righty facebook this is